there is one register delay that we have not considered so far, which is hold time. Hold time is defined as the time after the active edge of the clock that the data has to be held stable. So if you look at the active edge of the clock, as soon as the clock goes up to 1, transmission gate T1 becomes off. Transmission gate T1 creates an open circuit and detaches the input D from the rest of the register. And so basically looking at this uh, diagram this way, we can say that hold time is equal to zero. We do not actually need to hold the data any time after the active edge of the clock. We can immediately change it because as soon as transmission gate T1 uh, is, is cut off, uh, D can, you know, does not need to be held anyway. You know, if we hold it, it's okay. But if you remove it, that's also okay because it has no impact on what's happening inside the register. The problem with this um, assessment is that it assumes uh, an ideal clock. Our problem here is that the uh, clock bar, the inversion of the clock, is uh, obtained from the clock through an inverter. And the inverter has a propagation delay delta. And therefore, it takes a time delta for the uh, signal clock bar to become the inverse of clock after any transition. So even though we write clock and clock bar as a logic inversions of each other, they are signals and signals have delay. This creates a period of time when the active edge of the clock, when the positive edge of the clock comes, called a 1-1 overlap period. And a period of time when the clock goes down, called a 0-0 overlap. So we have two overlap periods, one where both clock and clock bar are 1, and one where both clock and clock bar are null. And therefore, uh, we have to examine what these overlap uh, uh, durations have, uh, have to do with whole time and how they impact the circuit. The problem really has to do with transmission gates. So when we talked about transmission gates, we said that for a transmission gate to work properly, both the NMOS and the PMOS have to be on together or off together. The aim is to allow a VDD to pass in whole and a zero volt to pass in whole. The aim is not to have the NMOS work where the PMOS doesn't work. And this is why we attached um, controls to the gates of the two transistors that were always uh, logic complements of each other. But we assumed that they were perfect logic complements. We never assumed that there was delay. Now, because there is delay, clock and clock bar are sometimes not going to be inverses of each other, but will be equal to each other, specific, specifically during the 1-1 uh, overlap and the 0-0 overlap uh, periods. So let's assume that we have two transmission gates connected in series and these two transmission gates have opposite controls. So if this, the first transmission gate has clock and clock bar, the second transmission gate has clock bar and clock. Now these two transmission gates are never ever going to be uh, on together. This is the idealistic situation. This is the um, uh, situation we um, would consider correct. These two transmission gates should never be on together and therefore should, there should never be a direct path between nodes A and B. When transmission gate T1 is on, transmission gate T2 has to be off and vice versa. However, during the 1-1 overlap period, the NMOS of the first transmission gate is on because clock is equal to 1 and the NMOS of the second transmission gate is also on because clock bar is equal to 1. And so there is a direct path through the NMOSs. It's not a perfect uh, ideal zero resistance path, but a path it is between A and B when there shouldn't have been by design. Also during the zero zero overlap, there is a path through the PMOS of the first transistor because clock bar is equal to zero and a path through the second transmission gate through the PMOS because also clock is equal to zero, right? So what is screwing us in this case is the fact that clock and clock bar for a period of time refuse to be logic complements of each other because of a delay in the inverter. So how does this affect the re register and how does this lead to the uh, formation of whole time? Uh, if you look at transmission gates T1 and T3, T1 and T3 are exactly T1 and T2 that we were discussing just now. These are two transmission gates uh, in a forward path which should never be on together because one has the opposite control of the other. However, because there is a period of overlap, of 1-1 overlap, there will be a path uh, through from D to Q, 
which, um, which will create problems. So let's see, when clock goes to one in, on the active edge of the clock, clock bar takes some time to go down to zero. So clock bar will take some time to go down to zero. So when we look here, clock has made the correct transition at the correct time, but, but clock bar is taking some time to go to its correct value. Now, as soon as the active edge came, we expected transmission t, gate T1 to be off and transmission gate T3 to be on. What's going to happen here is that both T1 and T3 are going to be on. Specifically, only the end MOSs of T1 and T3 are going to be on. The fact that only the end MOS is turning on in transmission gate T3 is a nuisance, but it is not a huge problem because eventually also the PMOS will turn on as soon as clock bar goes down to zero. But the fact that transmission gate T1 refuses to shut down for the duration of the overlap is a problem. So the problem here is that the end MOS of transmission gate T1 refuses to close when we expected it to close. For how long is it refusing to close? For as long as there is an overlap. So for the duration of the 1 1 overlap, because clock bar has not gone, gone down to zero yet, the NMOS, which was supposed to shut down in T1, did not shut down. And so what's happening here is there is a path between D and this node, Q, uh, this node X that shouldn't exist after the active edge of the clock. After the active edge of the clock, we do not expect that there is a path between D and X. So if D is allowed to change within this window, within this window of time where the overlap occurs, then the change on D, this new value of D, this new new value of D, might actually go and settle in the master latch. When what the value we wanted to settle in the master latch is this value, the value that settled before the edge by T setup. So how do we guarantee that this value, this value, the one that we want to register, is the one that we will register? How do we guarantee that the new value does not seep into the master latch? We can guarantee this by forcing D to remain constant, so not allowing it to change after the active edge, but forcing it to be constant until the clock finally settles at the correct uh, clock and clock bar values. So until the 1 1 overlap period ends. What do we call the time that we force the data input to be stable after the active edge? We call it hold time. And therefore, hold time in this case is going to be the 1 1 overlap duration, which is basically an inverter delay, right? So why are we afraid of D getting into X? Because during the one phase of the clock after the active edge, it's smooth sailing from X all the way up to Q. Transmission gate T3 will be on during the, uh, the, the one phase of the clock. And therefore, any value that manages to seep into X will make it out to Q. And that is not the value you want to see on Q after the active edge. TCQ after the active edge, we want to see this value, this value, not any value that changes after the active edge. Now, we have to hold the data stable if, if the 1-1 one, one overlap is enough time for data to make it through T inverter 1 and T transmission gate 1 to Tx. So T hold is T11 one, one overlap if and only if T hold is also greater than T inverter 1 plus T transmission gate 1. But why? Because if this 1-1 one, one overlap time, this 1-1 one, one overlap duration is less than the summation of the uh, delays of inverter 1 and transmission gate 1, then if data changes after the active edge, it will not have enough time to reach X before uh, clock bar becomes 0 and transmission gate 1 closes. And therefore, we only need hold time if this inequality occurs. So what's happening on the uh, inactive edge of the clock, on the other edge of the clock? So clock goes down to zero and clock bar takes some time to go up to one. So when clock goes down to zero, transmission gate T3 is supposed to uh, close and transmission gate T1 is supposed to be on. And therefore, we should only allow data to go and, uh, uh, and settle in the master latch, but the slave latch should be opaque and should be keeping its old value during the zero phase of the clock. Now, 
Because we have 0, 0 overlap, what's going to happen is that both transmission gates T1 and T3 are going to be on specifically through their PMOSs. Transmission gate T1 is supposed to be on, so that's not a problem. Transmission gate T3 is not supposed to be on, so that is a problem. So what are we afraid of? We are afraid of any changes in D being able to um, go through and manage to um, cross transmission gate T3 before T transmission gate T3 shuts down. So we are afraid of changes happening after the uh, inactive edge of the clock that will then go through the entire master latch and then go through the uh, transmission gate of the, of the slave latch and thus cause Q to change on the inactive edge of the clock. This is not proper register operation. So this is a failure mode. So how can we guarantee that this does not happen? We can guarantee it by making sure that D, a change on D, would not have enough time to cross transmission gate I uh, T3, i.e. TI1 plus T transmission gate 1 plus TI2 plus T transmission gate 3. So this whole path is shorter than the duration of the 0, 0 overlap. So we have a 0, 0 overlap that keeps transmission gate 3 on for a duration longer than it should have been. So we should make sure that any changes on D do not have enough time to reach and cross transmission gate T3 before transmission gate T3 shuts down. Why do we not also impose a condition on D in that case? Why do we not use something similar to a whole time? Because we have already allowed D to change. By saying that whole time is a uh, property of the input after the active edge of the clock, we have given up control of D after this point and we can no longer demand that D remain constant or does not remain constant. We can only guarantee that this condition, which is called racing, does not happen by designing the delays of the gates and of the clock to satisfy the inequality. If you look at T00 overlap, it's basically an inverted delay. This is T00 overlap. And if you look at these delays, these are two inverter delays and two transmission gate delays. So this inequality is very likely to happen, is very likely to be uh, satisfied, and um, we are not going to observe any racing because this will take longer than this, and therefore there will be uh, no racing of data towards the output.